Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our Frozen Frontier prequel. So, Ferris has made his way all the way up to the, the Goblin Cave. Yes. Yes. Um, so, standing outside of it, I want you to tell me what you have seen of goblins. Have you ever met a goblin before? Are they have not. You like, heard of them if, by if I've, description? If I've seen one before, I probably saw one in passing out on a hunting trip one time. Mm -hmm. And like maybe we saw each other and both ran away, or maybe like I saw him and just kind of watched while he did this thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've probably never like dealt with goblins before. All right. So today's the first day you've ever killed a person, and it's mm -hmm. the first day you're going to run into some goblins, probably. Yes. Uh, all of two days after your yeah. mother abandoned like, you. Yes, and... Ferris's head is kind of like swirling, and it's 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 kind of like nice and cathartic in a way because it's keeping his mind off a, uh, off of uh, just ordinary life. Mm -hmm. It's kind of keeping keeping him. Uh, he, he was looking for something to occupy his mind with, and this is keeping him very occupied. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, here you are. So why don't we take <laughs> it a uh, one square at a time, and mm -hmm. just see what happens. Let me know what yep. you're doing. What you're Saying, what you're thinking yeah so i'm trying to like move forward a little bit and then just like poke my head out so that i'm like less visible and less likely to be spotted i want to try and like peer into this cave and see what i can see from the entrance do it all right so could i like because i think my vision is based on where i move the token yes could and i like move out to here a little already. bit for yeah. vision yes and then just say that i'm like right here but i'm like lying sure. down and looking out a little bit uh yeah and you can look ahead into the darkness and make your own decisions on what you see all right, so I, I start creeping forward a little bit at this point. And I kind of stay close right. to the wall. Stop there for a there moment. There we go. <laughs> yes, at this point you can hear some jabbering inside. Some argy barky. Yeah, and I, I see I see the outline of two two shapes, and I, I hear the goblin speak, and I, I immediately get ready to loose an arrow and fire it their way. Hey, uh, you are still backlit by the light coming from the outside. They are in the darkness. Mm -hmm. But I think this is where we roll initiative right here. All right. Um, D10 plus 7 for the bow. 10. They go at 10 and 11. All right. So I'm going to shoot at the one who's running, like, I guess, faster at that point, the one who sees me first. The one yes. who's closer, I'm going to shoot right. at them as he so charges you, at me. So you draw a bow, notch an arrow as the goblins come in your direction. Yes. So the one charging me... Uh, I have plus two ah. range weapons. Cries 18. Out. That is too big of a goblin. There we go. 18 <laughs> is definitely a hit. Um, and I think you guys both went at 10. Yes. So, so he'll he'll reach me and attack. Yes, even if you do kill him. Uh, please roll me. One damage. <laughs> All right. The goblin closes to you as your arrow pierces his lung uh, and makes a wild stab with his spear. It just plummets into the ground as the goblin topples <laughs> over on top of his spear, driving <laughs> the arrow through his body and kind of out the other end. I, I rolled one damage. You said that I pierced his lung, and I, I just kind of had to take a moment to sort of sort my, my thoughts out on that one. Mm -hmm. Black guy's definitely dead. <laughs> All um, right. The other goblin is responding to the, the death of his friend. His mm -hmm. best friend, the best man out of his goblin wedding, mm -hmm. uh, and gives a, a thorough charge in Ferris's direction, uh, complete with his spear stab. Ooh, of 17 to hit. That will be a hit. Uh, yeah. I don't know if my AC is 12 or 13 with the armor, but that would make me 15 or 16 to hit, respectively. Ooh. Uh, let's say it's kind of weaker leather armor, so let's give it AC 12, okay. and then you have so high dex. 15. Yeah. yeah, so 15 is my okay. AC. The goblin spear drives into you for three points of damage. Okay. Uh, a weak, but still damaging blow. Yes, I will go ahead and mark that. Um, so now you're in melee with a goblin and you've got your mm -hmm. bow. You can make your second shot, but it'll provoke an attack of opportunity. No, 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 no. I'm gonna pull out the scimitar and get ready for okay. next. So then let's roll initiative for the next round. I'm not, I'm not a fan of uh, firing in melee yeah. as a DM or as a player. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here, so D10 plus five for the Scimitar. 14, he'll probably go first. Um, he, You guys tie. He rolled oh, an eight cool. and six. All right, so let's make those attacks. Goblin 11. thrusts at you with a 14 to hit. That is a narrow miss. I okay. just like duck my head out of the way of the spear, but uh, does the 11 hit? 
It does. These goblins are unarmored. Perfect. D8 damage. He takes four. Uh, and survives. All right. Okay. Uh, he makes his... Oh, no. He already made his attack. So initiative. Uh, 11 for the <laughs> goblin. Um, oh, you should get two attacks last. No, you're not specialized. You no, I'm not specialized. Yeah, I'm only proficient. Uh, he makes another stab at you with an 11 to hit again, but it's no dice. Hit. Yep. And I will roll that. D20 plus uh, nothing. 10, so that should be a hit if they're unarmored. That is a strike. For another 7. All right. You skewer the goblin who falls to his knees beside his companion. Uh, you don't know if there's any more goblins in this cave, mm -hmm. but the sounds of combat here were fairly loud. Not, you know overwhelming, but there's still definitely the sounds of people fighting and dying. Mm -hmm. um, what are you going to do? Um, so let's lower. I'm going to drag these bodies out of the cave. Can I get like both one in each arm and like drag them both along the ground at the same time so I don't have What's, to make two trips for it? Uh, give me a strength check to do it. Sure. I've got 14 strength, so maybe okay. Nope. <laughs> okay, so I'll do it one at a time. Yeah. And I'll drag these bodies out of the cave. Uh, and I want to get them, like, around the corner. I'm not trying to, like, move them far. I just want to get them out of the cave so somebody who comes and, like, takes a cursory glance down this hall isn't going to see two dead bodies laying on it. Like, closer yeah. inspection, we'll see blood. But, you know, you can only do so much. Sure. So you'll drag the goblins outside. Yeah. And then I will uh, go back to creeping down this hall a little bit. Hey. Uh, your infravision will kick in, as it is right now. You'll be able to see up to 60 feet in the dark, yes. um, but the vision dims, I think, starting 5, 10, 15, 20. Around 30 feet is when your vision kind of dims. So the first three, 30 feet are good vision. The last yep. 30 feet are not so good. Okay. Um, here there is a ledge. You can climb up it. The goblins mm -hmm. were standing on it. It's about five feet tall. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm even taller than it, so it shouldn't be too hard to pull myself mm -hmm. up. Yeah. I'll just kind of creep up a little bit, see... Like, I look there, I don't see anything, and I'm going to move over here and then, like, go around this corner and see if there's anything, and I see something. Yes, there's something around this corner. Okay, so I'm going to start creeping down here, because I'm... Curiosity has taken me. No, and it's just nothing. a dead end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Neil, you need, to, you need to take a cue from Final Fantasy 2 and just make a dungeon full of doors into empty rooms. That's that Final Fantasy 2. I watched Greg play it, and it was literally just him walking through dungeons, opening doors, and he'd walk into a room that was completely empty. And there'd be like 20 of those in a single dungeon. It was great. Beautiful. Oh, God. I love, I love good level design. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm going to okay. creep up and pull myself up this ledge. Not seeing any other way forward. Not a problem. Easy to pull up. Okay. I continue to like look down. I don't see anybody down that hall, but I see that like I could be. Ooh, yes. okay. So I peer around there and I see something. Yeah, uh, there are some broken table. Well, not broken. There's um some knocked over chairs, a little bedroll, mm -hmm. a small table with what appears to be very old playing cards. Some of them are even missing. Doesn't look like a full deck. Mm -hmm. uh, and on them is the stench and slime of goblins. Okay. Interesting. All right, so I think I probably like wrinkle my nose a little bit at the uh, the smell of goblin mm -hmm. that inhabited this place, and then I I just kind of like start creeping back down the hall. I figure that's probably like the guard, like for for whoever's keeping watch, one of them can rest while the other one does their job. But I don't mm -hmm. worry too much about it, and I I continue creeping down these halls. Hey. I'm Ferris is pretty thankful that it's always been like one long path going down, and he's not like walking down one long path with like another one behind him. Mm -hmm. He's thankful for the linearity of this dungeon. <laughs> Making his life easier. And he creeps down. And does he eat his words at a sudden fork in the road? No, not yet. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> he just kind of creeps forward a little bit more. And now, now he eats shit for what he was saying just before. Yes. You can still hear the, the dripping of water all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you see these massive spider webs not not quite cobwebs but large thick webs a mm -hmm. little bit for you and a little bit to your left you, like giant spider webs large like big webs you know 
you, this area right here, okay. if that ping goes off. Does um, it look like the spider webs go down two paths and not a third? Well, what what does it look like to you? Oh, that's, okay. So it looks like there's a spider web going down that way, and I see a mummified corpse down there. That's nice. Um. God, I hate giant spiders. <laughs> All right. So Ferris is a little bit perturbed by this information, but he's going to stay the hell away from the left direction for now. And he's going to creep down the right. Actually, no. I hear I hear something, and I immediately take a few steps back. And some weird skittering on the ground. I don't know if you were playing something specifically in a in Discord um, or not. Yes, I am. Okay. I'm a little bit bothered by this, but like you know, it's not coming toward me. I don't really have much choice but going forward. Maybe I like maybe like takes a few minutes and he backtracks and like make sure he didn't miss a path. But I'm pretty sure I didn't miss anything, so he, he eventually comes back. You know, kind of steals himself because he knows there's no way, no way around it, and he goes down the right path. Should always take the righteous path. Yes. He finds a dead end. Beautiful. Oh mm -hmm. wait, no. Yep. Okay. Yep. Dead end. A uh, complex of goblin tunnels awaits you. These all look very natural. Uh, mm -hmm. They don't look carved in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. So this web, does it look like one web and then nothing else, or does it look like there's just webs all the way around back there? Hmm. Uh, try zooming in. That might help clear it up for you. Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks like there's some more. Um, so... Definitely does look like a mummified body at the back. Yeah, and I, I want to know... Does it look like child-sized, or does it look like a full-grown adult? Well, each one of these squares is five by five. Mm -hmm. So it's a decent distance away. Yeah, but you can see how long the body stretches oh, across the. Oh, okay. So it looks square. like a full-grown adult then. Mm hmm. Hmm. I think I, I, Ferris files that in his check back later options, and then just goes straight. Eh. And thinks better of it, and goes up and starts hacking at this web with his saber. Okay. Curiosity is getting the better of him. All right, so your first hack with your saber cuts through some of the spider webs. A few of them cling to it. Your second hack cuts through a few more, but now you've got more webs clinging to your sword, and it's kind yeah, of and they're if, it, if it's hard to get it. them off, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop and kind of back up a little bit, and like yeah. you know, do what I can to get these webs off of my saber. So as you're trying to scrape these webs off of your saber, mm -hmm. uh, lurking from coming from around the corner is uh, probably your worst nightmare. A very large spider kind of steps out mm -hmm. and turns towards you. And at All this right, point, is... we're going to roll some okay. initiative. Um, your right. sword is still slightly stuck in the web. It'll just take a strength check to break it off. Okay. But uh, we'll roll initiative to see how this goes. Uh, so just straight d10, I guess. Yes. Uh, the spider goes at... I can do math at 10. <laughs> okay, um, so I make my strength check. Which ooh, is a fail. And Ferris, trying... Ferris is not giving up on the scimitar. He will die before he lets go of the scimitar. So he okay. uh, he clings to it. So have your All spider right. do its worst, Neil. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. The spider crawls easily through the webs up towards Ferris. Um... Beady eyes looking all over you, yeah. and reaches out. Am I able out. to make like a, a kick at it or something? Um, yeah, I would say that your strength check doesn't take your whole round. You could make a, a kick yeah, at it. Yeah, so I probably just like kick at it when it tries to bite at me. So it's sure. just like opposed attacks. Yeah, go ahead and make an attack roll. Seventeen. Ooh, you do indeed kick the large spider. Okay, is unarmed D three or D two? Uh, boots I think are D three. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I guess damage. it's a huge spider, technically speaking. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it's like six feet across. Oh, okay. I think it's okay. showing When you said the... huge, I, there's like a thing that's actually a huge spider. Oh, right. 
And right, that's, that's a, a phase, that's the type F poison. A sword. Yeah, there's a bunch of these. There, there's one that's like a type F poison spider. That's it's just like a bigger version of the other spiders, but it's classed huge and it's type F poison. Mm. Oh, giant spider. That's it. Yeah. Because there's hairy, large, huge, giant, and gargantuan. <laughs> but the large spider is size small. The huge spider is size medium. <laughs> the giant spider is size large, and the gargantuan is actually size large. Okay, so the gargantuan's <laughs> the, uh, the deadly spider. I mean, they're uh, all deadly. Yeah. But... Th this is just a huge spider. It's okay. medium sized <laughs> not to metagame the information but right. I, I know all the spiders from the monsters manual from heavy usage myself yes all right so you give it a kick as it reaches out with its fangs to bite you but you with your high dexterity manage to keep away from it still holding on to your sword uh, let's roll initiative d10 uh, i guess unarmed would be plus two so um uh, i think plus three Oh. Oh yeah, no, daggers yeah. plus two and running yeah. plus three, you're right. Yeah. Um so the, I do The spider end. goes before you, just barely. Okay. Uh, once again reaching out with its fangs to bite you and missing. Alright, so I make my strength check, which is a pass this there time. There you go. You... Can I make a swing at it with my saber? No, it's, it takes the round to rip the saber from the spider webs okay. and pull it free. Uh the spider still hangs back in the webs, not coming mm -hmm. off of them to get you. So yeah. with my distance then, I'm going to go back so that it can't quite reach me, but I can reach it. Because I've got longer reach than it when I have my saber out, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So if it's not coming out of the webs, I'm going to take a few steps back and then just kind of like hold it at range with the saber. Okay. Um, let's roll initiative again. Alright. Oh, plus five. Sorry. So twelve. Okay, you said you took a step back or something? Yeah, like, I, I want to keep it, like, I want to be in range to stab at it, but basically I'm just trying, because you said it wasn't coming out of the webs. Right. So I think seeing that, he's going to, like, just kind of stay a little bit back and keep it at range with this saber. Yeah. Uh, the spider stays in its web, kind of hissing at you. Uh, mm -hmm. It's two front legs kind of dancing as if they're going to strike you or something mm -hmm. while it examines you, holding its action. Okay. Mm. It's your turn. Uh, I'll probably never have a better chance. I take a swing at it. <laughs> right. 11. That's probably a miss on the spider. Uh, it is indeed a miss on the spider. Your sword yeah, whistles microphone. through the air, and as the it does so, the spider takes the opportunity to yep. leap towards you. <laughs> that should be the <laughs> front. There we go. Uh, oh, God, with a 3 plus... Yes. Two, no, three plus one is four. Oh, it's a terrible leap. In fact, the spider leaps over you. It, it hits you, the ceiling when it jumps. <laughs> perhaps you duck under it, and yeah. uh, it just kind of falls to the other side before it turns around to face you. It's yeah. now got you between it and the web. All right. Uh, but it's initiative round. Okay. That it goes at nine. It goes first. Okay. Uh, this time, it's just straight up charging you. It's not attacking you. It's like trying to knock you into its web, which does yeah. provoke an attack of opportunity from you. Uh, at uh, plus four to hit and damage. Plus four. Yes. <laughs> That's a crit. Oh! oh. Uh, you don't is that even... a double crit? Uh, it has AC 14, so yes, it is. It takes 15 from that hit. Six and eight is 14. So as the spider tries to push you into its web, you, how, how do you bring it down in one blow? Uh, I think I probably like dodge to the side when it like tries to charge into me. Like it, it's pretty obvious when it's got you between it and its web that it mm -hmm. wants to get you in it. So he, he like jumps to the side and like as it charges past, he just skewers it along the side of the scimitar or saber. Right. The spider collapses to the ground in a twitching pile mm -hmm. of legs and eyes. All right. Wow. And do I have like a torch or something? I don't have uh, items for my, my sheep planned out because it's no. you know 30 years uh, prior right i think you i'm wondering don't if have I, any do I have like flint and steel or anything to make like fire with probably not because you just okay. ran out of the house right talked to the yeah. people in the square and I then figured. took off hmm? uh did i see anything in like the like the goblins had a, a little area where they had like beds and stuff did they have any like flint and steel anything to produce fire with there was nothing sitting out, but there was that bedroll, and there were some <coughs> things lying around. You might be able to sort through it and find something, but okay. there wasn't anything obvious when you were just looking. I still hear the sound of skittering spiders. It's playing in Discord. I'm wondering if I still hear it, uh, or if you just forgot. Water to dropping off. and your footsteps. oh, I thought that was I thought that was skittering spiders. No, no, no. That, that's that's water dropping from the ceiling. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, so if I don't hear anything else from spiders, I'll, I'll, you know, I don't have any form of fire. I don't really want to backtrack all the way just to try and find some. So I'll start trying to somewhat quietly hack through this web and like clean the webs off whenever they start to stick. Sure. It is a slightly slow process. Mm -hmm. uh, but you eventually make your way through that first section of webs. All right. I just want to check and see what is... I'm going to, like, rip open the webs and uh, see whose face it is. Um, for you is a human woman mm -hmm. in her 30s, maybe? Maybe early 30s, late 20s. Uh, you can't make out too many details because the rest of her body is wrapped in web, but mm -hmm. her face is very clearly desiccated, you know, as if she's already been drained by the spider. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna, like, try and see if I can get her hair type and see if I can recognize her if, if she's from my village. Make me a charisma check, please. Nope. Still don't I, recognize I, anybody. You know, I, I might get through this entire campaign never succeeding on charisma check, and I'd be just fine with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely a human woman, not your mother. Okay. As chat is suggesting, it could be. Yeah. I mean, she's Elven, so it couldn't yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the hair color is kind of a, like a, a rusty red, almost. Mm -hmm. Okay. And red hair is kind of uncommon? Like yes, people definitely might uncommon. Recognize her. Okay. Yeah. So I meant, I'll, I'll you know note that in my in memory banks as I'll write it out on notepad really fast. And then I will uh, go back to going down the straight path. So rusty red hair. All right, and I will go back to going down that. I'll just go and turn because I'm facing this way. And I'm going to start heading down this way. Okay. Uh, actually, do I see anything in this? I assume this is where the spider was. Do I see right. any, like, gems or jewelry or anything? Unfortunately, you do not. <sighs> okay, I go back to going down the path. <laughs> Eve is quiet, eerily so. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep my footsteps as quiet as I possibly can, take them nice and slow, so that I don't disturb anything. Hmm, it's a fork in the path. Beautiful. Right, I'll head up this way. And I will take the right. I see like a bearskin rug, and yes. I maybe like take a step back and like get along this wall as much as I can, and just kind of like slide along it. I can't move through that. <laughs> yeah. I just like slide along the wall as much as I possibly can. I want to like peer around this corner and like see if I can see down here and see if there's anything of note. Uh, yes, there are many things of note including a kind of swarming insects over what looks to be rotting food. And mm -hmm. as you step into the room, small rats kind of scurry and run for the, the corners away from you. Okay, so I, I take like another step. I'm peering around this corner. Is that a bedroll right there? Oh. All right, Ferris like pokes his head around as much as he can. It looks like a bedroll. Yeah. All right. There's definitely things like lying around. You know, there's like right. a hunk of food, but it's old and rotting. Mm -hmm. There's a, a bowl of porridge probably left from a few days ago with the insects swarming around it, little spiders crawling over it. Okay. So I'm going to like carefully step around these rugs because they look disgusting. Mm -hmm. Or I guess they're not rugs. They're just Well, food. I mean, it, it's a rug now. <laughs> Used to be and a I, creature. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I assumed that they were rugs, and then you said food, and I was like, oh, that's probably it. I can oh, go yeah. around yeah. this way. It's probably little bits of flesh still hanging on one of the bear skins. Mm -hmm. And I'll just, I'm trying to, like, not step on any of these, as though my life depends on it. And I'll, like, start moving around this room looking for something. Carefully avoiding all the pit traps hidden underneath the bear skins. <laughs> well done. Yeah. I mean, you never know. You, you step on some food, and a spike comes flying up and skears you in the foot, and then your adventuring days are over. You never know. I already went here. Okay, so I don't see anything of note going down this way. Maybe I just missed something. I am I am incredibly blind when it comes to visual gaming, <laughs> but I don't see anything, so I start to head back and go down the, uh, the straight path. Okay. Right. The big stalactite, stalagmite column before you, which should block your vision, but apparently I didn't 
doodle appropriately. Okay. Oh From yeah. Here yeah. you can start to hear the voices. Oh yeah. Oh of yeah. Sorry. Let me. You said that was a stalagmite. Yeah, it's like a column where okay. a stalagmite. Yeah. So I'll, is I'll like get behind reach. it. I, I thought it was like a little easier for a second, but yeah, if it's like big enough that I could stand behind it, I'll do that. Like, Definitely. Peer around it. Uh, you peer around it, and you can hear the jittering of goblins from the other side. Okay. Um. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get my bow ready. I'm gonna fire a shot at the first one I can see. And I'm gonna move back down the hallway a little bit to like right here. Okay. Well, they definitely haven't seen you, so uh, yeah. So why don't I'll you make your around. attack? Yep. I'll give you what is it like plus two for? Is it plus one or plus two for surprise? I never remember. Uh, I think it's plus two for surprise, but I'll double check. It, yeah, I'm gonna double check. I think check. it's plus one for plank for flank, plus two for back attack, and plus two for surprise. But I'm double checking right now. Um, let's see. Surprise. Morale surprise is penalty of two. Modifier. AC surprise is one. Okay. So a plus one to hit for surprise. Um, do, 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 do. Also, they Under, can't yeah, see one. you. It's the equivalent of you being invisible. So we'll just say it's a plus four to hit. Um, cause it's as if you're invisible. Oh, okay. So they, they can't, even if they were looking, they wouldn't be able to see me. Well, they don't see you. Okay. They might so be, I think they might actually... be able to, but currently they don't. Okay, so what I'm gonna do? So plus four for that? Yes. Okay, so plus three, plus seven. Uh, I think. Hmm. If I'm if I'm catching them by surprise, I think he belays going back a little bit, and he's gonna try and take a second shot before he starts moving back. All right, fifteen but, uh, is a hit. All right, so that D six comes out for one damage. A beautiful one point of damage yes. on the goblin. And I'll shoot the one on... I, I guess I'd probably see the one on the left first. I was going to say the one on the right, but I guess i go for the one on the left. Okay. Uh, let me get their HP rolls here. Okay. Uh, you said the one on the left or the one on the right? Uh, I figure it's probably the one on the left. Like, I see okay. him first. It's probably the easiest shot for me to make. Sure. Uh, you strike the one on the left mm -hmm. for a single point of damage. Yep. And then I get a second attack for the surprise uh, round. Yes. It is part, still part of the surprise round. The goblins are freaking out like, oh, my okay. God, there's something coming in here. I guess it's an ambush round. Let me roll for surprise as well. Okay. Um, they pass their surprise check, so you can finish the ambush round. Okay. So 26. That's a crit. That, that is a double, double crit. crit. You Triple? do clear by... No. You clear by 10. Okay. Oh, no, well, you do clear by 15. Yes. Okay. It so is. 46. Uh, no damage bonus. So this one takes 17. Yeah. The arrow just hits it square in the throat. The goblin flies back a few feet uh, before collapsing to the ground right. in a pile. And then, yeah, so then I guess for the next round that's about to roll for it, he, like, stows his bow because he's probably out of time with that surprise. And he's going to grab his scimitar, and he's going to get ready to back down the hall a few feet. Okay. Um, do initiative. Let's do some initiative. Twelve. Okay. Um, they go at nine, fifteen, and eighteen. Okay. So one of the goblins goes first. Starts coming towards you with his spear out, mm -hmm. closing the distance and stabbing at you with a 19 to hit. That's a hit. Uh, doesn't clear by five though, right? Yes, does not okay. clear by five. All right. The goblin spear penetrates your armor for a whopping four points of damage. Okay. Um, and then you go uh, at 12. Okay. Yes. Uh, so when I was up against that stalagmite, did it look like I could squeeze through on the right, or does it just look too narrow? You would, you could squeeze through on the right. Yes, it would a tight fit though. Okay. Um, what I'm gonna do then? I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a fighting withdrawal to go down to here, and then I'll get ready for the next round. Okay. So you withdraw back to there. In fact, I'll go one more down like that. Okay. Um. Interesting choice of action. Okay, the goblins. Hmm. And he can like follow me if he wants. I think that's the rule for fighting withdrawals is the the person who yeah. choose to follow. He doesn't. I okay. get. Okay, that 
That's right. So the the goblins come over. Another one of them squeezes into this bit. Yeah, that's um, what I figured. And they stand there gibbering at each other and at you. Does he like move toward me? At all? No. Or is he just kind of like gibbering? They at they me? stand there with their spears out facing you. All right. I say, do you speak common? Nothing. All right. I pull the dagger from my belt and I throw it at him. <laughs> oh, roll the hit. Uh, D20 plus two or three? I think it's three actually from this. Three. Uh, you're no so two. You're targeting two. the guy on the right, I take yes. it. Yes. So I chuck okay. my He's dagger. He's got some him. cover. Sure. Um, uh, what's the penalty? Let's see. I'm gonna give him 25% cover, which is penalty of two to hit. Okay. So just flat D20 then. Yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Planks off the side, but the goal was mostly to get him get the idea that he needs to move down this hall. All right. Uh, let's see what the goblins feel about. Okay. Uh, they will hurl. They're going to come at you. So let's roll initiative okay. for the next round because you were cool. kind of fighting at the range. Ooh, that's oh, slow. sorry. 14. Yeah, they go slower. You can... Uh, I guess you can ready to attack for yeah, when I'm gonna he ready closes an attack for when he closes. He does. All right, so d20. That's a miss. He can that do is a, thing. a miss. The goblin comes up with a spear. Rolls to hit with a 13. That's a miss. Okay. Close, but no cigar. Yeah. Uh, another goblin comes in behind him, but it's cramped quarters, and they can really mm -hmm. only hit you one at a time here. Uh, give me an initiative. D10 plus 5. 13. Um, you beat the goblin by one. All right. So I go and roll my D8, or D20. Mm -hmm. Nope. Uh, no, now the rolls nope. are going against me. Nope, nope, nope. The other goblins back out into the darkness, back into whatever chamber is beyond, leaving you one on one with this guy, uh, who makes his attack at a three. Terrible hit. Yes. The two of you are having trouble in this narrow corridor. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not used to having things so close on either side. I'm used to like long open swings with a with a saber. Ferris yeah. tries like going for more of a thrust now, and yeah. sees how that works out for him. Oh. Eleven initiative for the goblin. Seven for you. Go for it. D twenty. There we go. That's get a hit. something off with a thrust, and he rolls one damage. It's okay. He has a yeah. one HP goblin. He crumples Beautiful. under the blow. Uh, in the back room, you can hear the frittering chatter kind of climb to a louder and louder. Okay. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pull out my bow, and I'm gonna move forward again. And if they're like back in the room, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a shot at them, and then I'll run back down the hall again. So should I go and roll an attack? Um, yeah. <laughs> that was a really big person for a second. For a second, yeah. Yeah. I wait. So I see that, right? So yeah, you can see that one of the goblins has a small girl I, held I shout, in front of him with okay. a knife to her Does, throat. I say, I shout, "Give her to me! Give me the girl!" Uh, the girl cries out, "Help!" Yeah. So I, I like hold the bow and aim it straight toward him, and I say, "Give me the girl!" And I will leave in peace. You guys seem to have a Mexican standoff going here. Mm -hmm. They've got the girl. They don't want to yeah. give her up. Ooh, okay. He doesn't want to give up the girl? Well, he doesn't look like he's giving up the girl. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, shame if she died here. But I'm not going to disarm myself for goblins. Um... I, I, Ferris tries just, like pointing to the girl a little bit, right? Like he he unknocks the arrow for a second. He like points to her with and, his like, with your hand. Yeah, like I point at her and I like point specifically at the girl, mm -hmm. and I shout uh, to like bring her forward, and then I go back to like knocking an arrow. Mm. No, oh, it seems motion. to have no uh, bearing on the goblin. The the one with the girl, he's got a, a shield and a short sword, unlike the others okay. you've seen. And he if, if jabbers not, something to the one with the spear. Who I was I was gonna forward. say like if he doesn't if he doesn't uh, move with it, I'm gonna fire the shot at the guy and retreat back down the hall. Okay, make your shot. All right, d20 plus two, 11 should be a hit. That is a hit for one damage. Uh, this goblin also has one HP. Look at that. <laughs> uh, he dies on the spot, leaving you with the shielded and, and sworded I, goblin. Yeah. So and I, I like point to this guy again, and I like point to the girl specifically and. Like motion to bring her forward. 
Um, give me a charisma check. All right. How intimidating is your presence right now? <laughs> Not at all. In fact, <laughs> the goblin is so not intimidated by you, he just tosses the girl to the side and All right. charges you. I was going to say, I was going to pull out my saber at that point and retreat back down the hall. So no, no, he, he, does, he just throws the girl to the side yeah. and runs at you with sword and shield in hand. Uh, give All me right. an initiative roll. <laughs> uh, he goes at seven. Eight, I'm sorry. Uh, he goes before me. Oh, no, no, so you, we go at the same time. Yeah. The, the goblin... <laughs> I roll an 18, which should be a crit. Um, this goblin has actually 13, 14, That's still a thir 14 oh, okay. AC. Yeah, so it's not, not a crit, crit but Damn. it is a hit. He takes seven damage from that. Ooh, oh, almost actually, no, enough. he has an AC penalty of one from the charge. So uh, that would make it a crit. I suppose so, yes. All right. Yes. So he takes nine in total, actually. Oh, so close. <laughs> Uh, the goblin survives, but has a, a look of, oh my god, what the fuck just happened as your sword penetrates his body. Mm -hmm. uh, his sword comes down on you with an 18 to hit. That's a hit. Um, and hits you for five. That knocks me down. I'm right on zero. You're right on zero? Right on zero. All right. I think uh, the, the I was world... I hoping for the lower damage roll. The world fades to black for Ferris. All right. Um, and you just go unconscious. Uh, mm. You have these kind of vague awakenings. Kind of your eyes flitter open for a moment, but it's dark mm. and you're having trouble seeing. You can feel that your your wounds are bound. There's something wrapped tightly around you, mm -hmm. and there's some noises, some loud yelling from somewhere in the cave. But you're not really able to to piece it together. Okay. It just kind of comes and, and goes for a moment, um, and you, you lose consciousness again. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how do we... Uh... So what does... What does Ferris uh, dream of, for lack of a better term, while you're mm. unconscious? Ugh. Um... You know, what, what are the your dying thoughts like, or whatever? Yeah, I think he probably dreams of like uh, epic battles and things like that. Like he he dreams of just um like he it was an exhilarating experience going through these fights and like hacking through these goblins and like the bandit back on the bridge. And he probably dreams of like warfare and battles, like being on that you know the knife edge of death as he like fights other people in a uh, in very mm -hmm. close quarters melees. Mm -hmm. okay. So eventually, your your dreams end. Mm -hmm and you wake up. Uh, you are surrounded by heavy things. Okay. Um, you can feel the weight of things pressing down on top of you. Bodies? Yeah. As you start to kind of come to and really hold your surroundings, you realize that you are at the bottom of a stack of goblin bodies. And the thing that woke you up was the taste of goblin blood dripping like into Ugh. your nose. Uh, so not, not just like in your mouth, but it's like permeating your right. your entire sense of smell. Uh, so is that guy who downed me uh, in this body pile? You're gonna have to dig your way out first. Yeah, so I, I dig my way out first thing I can. It's a a pain in the ass. Give me a strength check to see if you can manage it quickly or if it becomes a struggle. Yeah, I, okay. I do it fine. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bit of a pain, but you you get yourself out of the uh, clump of goblin bodies. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, right. the one with the armor and the shield is there. The sword is missing, okay. but the, the body is there. I, I look around frantically for my saber. You don't see it. Okay, I start like digging through these bodies and see if I can find like a saber piled in with it all. Not there. And like if I don't see it there, I like start moving around this cavern a little bit, trying to find it. I look for the girl, see if I can find anything. Uh, go ahead and take your movements. Yeah, I'm like looking around frantically trying to find my saber in this place. He just like keeps running through this thing, not really, not really taking any heed as a normal dungeoneer would. He just like looks as much as he can for a saber. This is some sort of weird room back here. There's like a table and a, de mm -hmm. a chair. There's a bed. There's even a chest and a bookcase back in this little right. corner. He uh, he doesn't even pay that much attention. He like flips the table over, like hoping that there's like a saber underneath. Definitely he like not. tries to wrench this chest open. It opens and, like, easily. See. There is mm -hmm. nothing left in it. 
All right, yeah. so he like runs back down the hall. Going as quick as he can without like bumping into things. He looks down here, dead end. Down here is a dead end. There are corpses, old corpses yeah. there. Blood stains, bodies and of no saber. God knows what. No saber. All right, so he starts to run back no the way he can. Yeah, and we, I mean, if if there's a point where I need to get stopped for something, I'm gonna like, I, I basically just wanna go down like every nook and cranny of this place looking for that Why saber. Why don't you just give me a perception check? We'll sure. sort it out that way. That's a pass. All right, you scour the goblin cave and there is no sign of your saber. All right, I, I start piecing things together and think that maybe somebody came and finished my work and looted my, uh, thought I was dead and looted my stuff. So I, I head back out this cave and I just, I run out as fast as I can. The corpse of the spider is still there. Mm -hmm. And I just keep on going. Okay. And I want to head out and like, do I see anybody immediately outside the cave? You don't. Um, additionally, the bodies of the goblins that were out here are gone now. Mm -hmm. uh, you are having a hard time. You're at like one HP, right? You, you, right. you must have been unconscious for at least 12 hours or so because you're, you're okay. back to able to move, but it's painful movement, you know? Yeah, you're... I think, yeah, Ferris is having a hard time, but he like shrugs all that off and he's like just f mind fully focused on finding a sword. And he okay. just like starts running through the wilderness. And he's gonna check that, that tent with the bandits. Um, sure, you can go ahead and skip all the yeah. way down to the tent with the bandits. And then uh, he's gonna like peer inside and see if there's a saber in there. Uh, sitting around in the tent are three guys. All right. We should probably stop and I, the And like Ferris just pokes and... his head into the flap and like sees the three people and says, a saber. Do any of you have a saber? I look at you like you're a crazy person. One of them says, whoa there, buddy. What's going on? Are you uh, here for some games of chance? He says, shaking a cup of you... dice in it. I don't have time for that. Were any of you in that cave up to the north just now? They exchange glances. Why don't you just take a break off? You got some money? None. Did any of you take a saber? And I, I like look around this tent trying to find the saber. They shake their heads. There's no sabers here. Do I see anything as I look around? There are a few weapons, uh, spears, mm -hmm. axes, but, but no saber. No saber. All right. Ferris, um, there are a lot of closes. there's a lot of things though. They've got like bed rolls and backpacks mm -hmm. and tables and furs. And a saber could be hidden anywhere, but there's none in plain sight. Okay. I, I don't think they really hit it, but maybe I like upend a thing or two trying to like see if it was just like buried under something mm -hmm. and then not seeing anything. I like run back out the tent and start heading for town. They call, they yell after you after you upend mm -hmm. a few things, uh, but don't chase you. You see back at the bridge, there is another person on guard mm -hmm. um, who looks at you and gives his head a bit of a scratch. I say, a saber. Do you have a saber? The gentleman half draws out a short sword from his side. Not a short sword, a saber, damn it. What is your problem? My saber. I was in the goblin cave to the north. My saber is gone. He shakes his head. None of my damn business. It. And he, he keeps on. Keep, he just like move, he just like starts to run past this guy. Okay. Um, you can make your way all the way back to town if you'd like. Yeah. And he, uh, yeah. he runs into town. All right. It's and a bit I, of a ways. I, my uh, first thought is to run straight for Tyrone. Tyrone the Indestructible. <laughs> um, you don't get back to town until after dark, actually. Because mm -hmm. uh, town's a, a few miles away from you. Yeah, uh, so when... I... Oh, go ahead. Uh, I guess in that case, I'll probably look for, like... There's a village elder, right? Like a mayor or something? Yeah. Uh, that, what was his name? Dingus. Dingus, Dingus the village right. elder. Uh, so I'm going to, like, go start banging on his door. Uh, all right. Well, before you get to his door, you can hear the sounds of sounds almost like a party happening. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's... Uh, it definitely sounds like someone's throwing a party or something. You can hear people talking you can hear the the sound of drinks being clanked together there's mm -hmm. even some music playing and so with that sound i don't even bother knocking i figure it's probably unlocked and i just like walk inside you walk into dingus's house it is the one of the larger houses in the village which means it has three rooms to it instead of just one room 
Uh, you can pretty quickly scour the place. It's not locked. Um, there are plenty of valuables lying around. I, mean, I don't take any too valuables the saber, right? No, you don't um, see the saber. And I, I head into the party room, and I want to see who's all around. And if I see Tyrone, I want to see if he has, like, a weapon, my, my um, weapon strapped to him. You take a look about. The, the party's not in here. It must be coming mm. from outside, from further into the village. Okay. So I, uh, I run back, and I head. And I, I'm looking for where all the people are. I want to find sure. uh, somebody to talk to. You, you manage to limp into the center of town, uh, the same place where Jonathan and Margaret were having their you know, announcement that their child was taken. Mm -hmm. uh, and sure enough, there is little Phoebe seated between Jonathan and Margaret on one side of the table with Tyrone standing right next to them. Uh, he's got your saber in one hand and the mm -hmm. goblin short sword in another. And he seems to be reenacting some sort of battle scene. All right. You can hear uh, him loudly. Ferris like, limps up as he's like reenacting the scene and like reaches to grab his weapon from Tyrone's hand. So as you're limping towards him, Tyrone's like, all right, so there were seven of them, right? They're all around me. I have, you know, the sword of that, what's his name? The, the semi-human from before who died just outside of the cave. Okay. So and after I take hearing one that, big swap. And then after he kind of, I interrupt and I say, the sword of the semi-human that you will now be returning. Hey, Barney, how's it going? I thought you were dead. Left you for dead back in that cave. Not quite. How the quite. hell did you get survive? You know, it's those sort of weird non-human things that survive anything. It's like a cockroach. You stamp them out and they just keep coming back. I don't care for your words, fool. Give me my saber. This hunk of crap, he just tosses it towards you unceremoniously, letting it land at the dirt a okay. few feet away from you. And the anyway, scabbard. Are you so gracefully hung around your waist. He rolls his eyes, ignores you, and goes back to telling a story about how he slew all the okay. goblins in the cave so single-handedly. I'll pick up my saber. I'll pick up my saber. Mm -hmm. And he's got like my scabbard strapped to his belt. Yeah. I'll just walk up and like jam the saber into his belt and like cut it off and then just grab my scabbard and walk away with it. Okay. He ignores you and continues to you know, regale the town with how he saved the girl and all the, the monsters he fought and all the monsters he slew on the way. Um, you get some weird sidelong glances and some you know, head shakes of disapproval. And you get the feeling that Tyrone has been stealing credit for your victories. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I'll probably look for, for uh, Margaret. And I say, what has he told people? The, uh, the looks, mom of Phoebe. Yeah, she looks back at you and goes, you're alive. Yes, narrowly. What, what has he been telling? She looks at you a little concerned. You, you say that like it's a... Not the truth. Not entirely. If he claims to have killed a spider, that was my work. Well, Tyrone, the... <sighs> hero of the village rescued little Phoebe from the clutches of those damn dirty goblins. Mm -hmm. He said there were uh, a few of them outside, three, three or four, I believe. I, I don't quite remember. And, and he, he cut them down into pieces, cut off one of their heads, and then went further into the cave where he fought the goblin king, even, and his bodyguards. Uh, he said he took your sword after finding you know, left for dead near the front by the, the two or three goblin guards and with a, a one sword in hand and the a sword from another goblin bought them all off slaying them and, and rescuing poor little Phoebe I think Ferris like waits for the end of the story and stops as if he's expecting even more to come out and he just kind of like has a ugh <laughs> 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 uh. Tyrone was always headstrong, but I didn't know he was a boastful fool to top it off as he, like, turns back and shouts it at him. Tyrone completely ignores you. He's in the middle of reenacting the scene where he's holding the Goblin King's head while he's hacking it off of the Goblin King's body. Of course, the head would still attach to the body when you found it. Mm -hmm. um, and then he lifts little Phoebe up on his shoulders and kind of you know, parades her around. 
you know, kind of galloping like he's a horse around the, the village square while everyone cheers for him. Uh, and everyone more or less just ignores you. Mm -hmm. No one makes room for you at any of the tables. You're badly wounded, you know. You're yeah. on the brink of death. And uh, you yeah, find yourself Ferris... kind of excluded from the party. Yeah, I think he's going to he's gonna limp back home at this point and uh, start nursing to his wounds. As you limp back home, you see Helga, the oracle, standing off to the side, away from the party like everyone else, uh, like you. Mm-hmm. Um, she sees you as you walk in her direction, uh, points a bony finger at you and said, Cursed! Cursed by the gods! I told you! I've been you. cursed from the day I was born, you bat! I'll hear none of your talk of gods! Cursed. And I think you limp back to your home. So, uh, we're gonna be more or less wrapping up here for the today. Mm -hmm. um, but what is going through Ferris's head about all this shit. I mean, you clearly Tyrone came through. You you were bandaged up. Yeah. Your your wounds have been patched. Okay. Did so the bandages did they cuz did they have um like do humans and goblins use the same materials? Do they look like something we'd have in the village or do they look like goblin work? They are more crude. They look like clothing that has been torn and So it looks like together. goblin work. Yeah, it me. looks like the goblin patched you up after you fell. Okay. Um, in that case, I think Ferris just kind of like, he's, he's a little pissed. Like mostly it was mostly being left for dead. Um, like being, you know, having the glory taken is one thing. Like he did, he did fail in the end and Tyrone did finish the job, even if he did steal some of his credit in the end. But I think, yeah, I think the thing that was that one HP left, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think what pisses him off more is like the whole being left for dead and, uh, Whole like he got back severely wounded and everyone just kind of ignored him and he had to go back and like stitch he had to like stitch a wound by himself and it hurt like a bitch and it took forever. Well, uh, that is our first solo adventure. I mm -hmm. think we're going to be doing these whenever we have a, a week that we can't meet. We're going to go back and do an episode about the characters in their former life. And kind of piece together who they are as people and hopefully make more sense of their characters. I think uh, this has been a revealing episode about who Ferris is from being rejected from society to eating people. <laughs> um, and I'm yet, still saying that's, that's got to be canon for elves, right? That's just that's just elven society. <laughs> That, as far as you are concerned, between <laughs> you and your mother, that is elven society, yes. Awesome. <laughs> um, so why... I, I, I have one pressing question for you. Mm -hmm. Why did Ferris go out of his way to rescue Phoebe when clearly none of the people in this village care about you and they barely tolerate you? Um, I think Ferris has a slightly softer spot in his heart for kids. Because they tend to not have the uh, like he probably grew up with some racial prejudices as a kid, but a lot of the uh, a lot of the other kids in the village probably didn't understand that, mm -hmm. and were slightly less uh, frustrating for him to deal with. Like he was mostly isolated, but he probably had frustrating experiences growing up, and he probably had better experiences dealing with other kids who were kind of too young to understand that prejudice. Mm -hmm. So I think he probably had a soft spot in his heart for like trying to rescue uh, trying to rescue one of the children who had been snatched. Is there anything else you would like to impart upon us? Any other knowledge or wisdom of Ferris that we should know? Uh, not really. I kind of just want to see what happens next when we, when we do another one of these. Yeah, I think we yeah. have a few more that we can do for mm -hmm. you before you leave the village. Yeah, so I, I didn't really know what was going to happen today. We, um, like we talked a little bit, like I gave Neil my backstory, and we set up like the premise for the session, but I didn't know what was actually going to happen. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool having, like I know sort of what Ferris becomes. And we're kind of like doing these sessions as because you can always fuck something up by playing a prequel episode. Yeah. <laughs> RPGs will fall apart very quickly. Uh, but it's it's fun to do that, that kind of thing, like try and play the game in a way that builds it toward a conclusion that both you and the DM are working for. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, this has been good. I'm mm -hmm. glad we got to take a look at Ferris and figure him out a little bit more. And we will see you guys next week. For a full episode of Frozen Frontier, I think. Right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Sunday, right? 
Yeah, I think everybody is around next week. Yeah, you are getting your wisdom teeth out, though, right? Yes, I'll, I'm getting my wisdom teeth out on Thursday. And don't, our game is Sunday. Yeah. Uh, I think I was fine to talk at that point. Just don't try to blow on anything. That that hurt really badly. Ooh, really not. Yeah, I, I like blew on a cartridge or something. And it just like... That was one of the most painful things ever. Yeah. Uh, but you should be fine in three days. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. If not, <laughs> it'll be a weird session, but we'll, we'll make it happen. Nash uh, will have like the best accent. It'll be great. <laughs> oh, God. All right, guys. It's been lovely doing Frozen Frontier. We'll be back next week with more of it. Uh, this is the end of today's stream. So we'll see you on Tuesday for regular streaming and misclicks and Saturday for shenanigans and Sunday for Frozen Frontier. Yep. Uh, um, I'm not going to do a discussion thread, but I'll jump on Discord occasionally and we can. So if anyone has questions about it, they can ask there. Of course. All right. Bye bye, everybody. Bye.